Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 1 times x minus 1 quantity cubed dx. So pause the video if you want to try it, but yes, you need to do partial fraction decomposition first and then go ahead and integrate. And I'll tell you right now, Finding the partial fraction decomposition of the integrand is the hardest part of the problem. Once we find it, the integration is super straightforward. But I did want to do this problem because anytime there's a repeated linear factor and the degree is, you know, more than two, this process can become super tedious. And I have a nice technique that I think will save you guys some headache. Not to say that it makes things super short, but it helps. It helps. Okay. So x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic. So when we find the partial fraction decomposition, the form, we remember we need ax plus b in the numerator, and then x minus 1 cubed, that's a repeated linear factor. So what you have to do is write it out three times. That is right. Starting with x minus 1 to the first, then you just work your way up until you hit the degree that you see there in the denominator. And then each of the numerators just has a constant. So C, D, and E, okay? So we gotta solve for A, B, C, D, and E. First thing we need to do is multiply through, get rid of all the denominators. So the LCD is X squared plus one and X minus one cubed, good? Okay, so then here we have two X plus two equals AX plus B times X minus one cubed plus c times x squared plus 1 times x minus 1 squared, d times x squared plus 1, x minus 1, and then e times x squared plus 1. I would not recommend multiplying this all out and then having a system of equations and solving for a, b, c, d, and e. That way it's going to just get really wild. So let me show you what works best what I think works best. So start off substituting in something for x that will zero out a lot of the terms. And hopefully you can recognize if I let x equal 1, all of the terms except the last one with e will become 0. So then I can solve for e. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to let x equal 1. And then now we have 2 times 1 plus 2. So that's 4 on the left-hand side equals 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus e times 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So 4 equals 2e. Boom. Now I know e is 2. However, at the moment, there's nothing else that I could substitute in for x to solve for the rest of the constants because x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic and its zeros are imaginary. So what to do? This is the interesting little maneuver. Now that I know e is 2, I'm actually going to go back and substitute it in right up there. And just for the sake of time, because I can, I'm going to do this copy-paste situation, okay? So now that I know e is 2, I have over here 2x squared plus 2, if I were to distribute it through, yes? Okay, I want you to move those terms to the other side. So subtract 2x squared, subtract 2, subtract 2x squared, subtract 2. And then let's see what we're left with. These 2s will cancel out, and I have negative 2x squared plus 2x equals all of this stuff. Boom. Now... The left-hand side should always factor so that you see that repeated linear factor pop up again here. So I can take out a negative 2x from both the terms, and then I'm left with x minus 1, and that's not shocking to me. That's usually how this little process will work. Okay, why does that excite me? Because notice now, basically, I can just cancel out an x minus 1 from everybody and then repeat the process of substituting in x equals 1 that I did earlier. So now I have negative 2x equals ax plus b times x minus 1 squared plus c times x squared plus 1 
times x minus 1 plus, now d is only multiplied by x squared plus 1. Do you see that? Good. So again, we'll repeat. We'll let x equal 1. And then now on the left-hand side, we have negative 2 equals. This will all be 0. This will all be 0. And then this is just going to be 1 plus 1 times d, so 2d. See how beautifully that worked out. Oh my goodness, I love it. So then now we know d is negative 1. Okay, very good. So if d is negative 1, where do I go next? I'm going to substitute in negative 1 there, distribute, and repeat the process that we just did. So I have negative 2x equals ax plus b times x minus 1 squared plus c times x squared plus 1 times x minus 1. Now d is negative 1, so minus x squared minus 1. And then now I'm going to move those over to the other side, plus x squared plus 1. And then you guys look over here on the left-hand side, we'll have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals all of this. And x squared minus 2x plus 1, that factors. That's x minus 1 quantity squared. And before you get too excited and think, ooh, let me just cancel out the whole x minus 1 quantity squared. Notice here on this last term, we only have 1x minus 1. So don't cancel more than what you have. So just cancel 1 here, 1 here. Now it's completely gone here. So then we have x minus 1 equals ax plus b times x minus 1 plus c times x squared plus 1. That's right. One more time. Let x equal 1. And then we have 0 equals 0 plus c times 2. So c is 0. You guys okay? Are some of you still frantically trying to do five variables, five equations? You didn't trust this method? That's fine. Okay, now that I know c is 0, if I substitute that in, this whole last term is gone. So then I just have x minus 1 equals ax plus b times x minus 1. I can cancel out both uh, x minus 1 from both sides. So then I'm just going to have 1 equals ax plus b. So basically 0x plus 1 is ax plus b. So then I know a is 0. Come on, straighten up like the rest. Get your act together. There we go. And then B is 1. Okay. So we got them all. How did you like this technique? Have you seen it before? Anyways, I think it helps. Otherwise, five equations, five variables, it can get a little hairy. I don't know. If any of you did it that way, though, let me know in the comments. I'm curious how it worked out for you. Okay, so put this all together. What are we going to integrate now? So we have integral, it was ax plus b over x squared plus 1 plus c over x minus 1 plus d over x minus 1 squared plus e over x minus 1 cubed dx. Okay, so let's clean up. What are we really integrating? 1 over x squared plus 1. Ooh, I love that. That's just tan inverse of x. Perfect. This guy is a 0. It's gone. Then I have negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. I'm going to write it as negative x minus 1 to the negative second, just to help us out a little bit. And then plus 2 times x minus 1 to the negative third dx. Are you ready? I told you this part wasn't bad. Now you're home free. So we've got tan inverse of x minus, now I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So if I add 1, my new exponent is negative 1. And then when I divide by negative 1, this becomes positive. Yes? Good. And then same thing over here. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So then you're going to have 2 times x minus 1 to the negative second, and then I'm going to divide by negative 2 plus c. And when you get really comfortable, you just start doing, you know, all of this in your head. So then if you were able to just jump straight to tan inverse of x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over 
x minus 1 squared plus c. If you just went straight there, give yourself a little pat on the back. I'm high-fiving you through the screen. Good job. And that's it. How did you like that integral of the day? I think it was partial fraction decomp heavy calculus light. You know what I mean? It just wanted to really test your partial fraction decomposition skills. Not the sort of thing I would like to put on an exam, but I think it's good practice to get you exam ready. And I was saying before in another video, you know, it's always a good idea to practice a wide array of problems, especially ones that are even harder than what you think will appear on any quizzes or tests, because then when you see the exam questions or quiz questions, they don't seem so scary compared to some of the stuff that you've worked through. So it just builds your skills. It helps you with your pattern recognition, and it just makes you more efficient and sophisticated as a math student. So I hope you guys are all having a great semester. I want you all to succeed. And if you need help reviewing any of these concepts or refining your skills, then you've come to the right place. I have so many videos and resources for you. Everything's organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. So just go through those. And then you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.